Hello, everyone. I'm Yali, and uh, today I'm going through this new QS design tutorial on dynamic simulation. Um, one thing you can notice here is that I'm using a new tool here. So the tool kernel book is showing up much nicer than before. Um, so I discovered this tool called um, Rise. This is actually an extension to the Jupyter Notebook, so Jupyter Notebook extension. Um, so today's tutorial is um, put together by Joy. I'm just going this through with this. Um, so from previous tutorials, when we were uh, when we were covering um, how to write a sign unit, how to run a sign unit, how to run systems, etc., we are always talking about them in the under the static mode. Um, so this tutorial, we're going to go through the dynamic simulation, the dynamic mode, um, which is very important in process modeling, especially for some of these uh, wastewater treatment models like active sludge models and aerobic digestion models. Um, as always, um, we are going to import um, QSD Sen and Expo Sen um, through our, uh, into the system. Um, so, and the example system we're going to start with is this benchmark simulation model number one. Um, you can find this um, full system in ExpoSyn. Um, and uh, if at any point uh, part of this, you forget about how to add those biokinetic reactions, etc., um, you can go through our previous tutorials on the process. All right. Um, so first part is running dynamic simulation. So let's first load this um, benchmark simulation model or BSM model system. Um, as you can see here is that right now, because we haven't simulated this system, so the influence, so the, there's an influence because we set the influence, but for the affluent is all empty. Um, if we look at the diagram of system, you can see there are essentially five um, reactor tanks here. Um, so this is the uh, active sludge process. Um, you have two sections that's um, anoxic, um, and then you have three sections that's aerated. Um, and at the end of that, you have this um, clarifier that sends part of the um, return active sludge to the wastewater uh, to the um, first reactor tank, and you also have this um, effluent and was from this. Um, clarifier, and there's also another return stream from the last of this bio reactor. And if we want to look at what units are in the system, we can certainly do so, and uh, this basically gives you the same information. Um, however, this is a sort of dynamic system. If we just try to let it simulate, what we will do is to raise this error. Um, and this is essentially because we are trying to simulate this system dynamically, but you are not finding any information related to that. So how can you tell if a system is dynamic or not? You can look at this sys.isDynamic property. Whether it's true is basically um, means that this system is dynamic. And this is essentially because there are at least one dynamics unit in the system. For example, um, so here, if we look at through all of the units in the system, and actually all of them are dynamic. Um, so what you can do um, if you don't want to run this system dynamically is that you can set this is dynamic property to false. Um, so, and then you will be able to simulate this system. So for example, you can see here, you know, say like there's no error after we set in this sys dot is dynamic property. There was an error when we're trying to simulate this system dynamically. So what do we need to provide for the system to be able to run dynamically? There's at least one attribute or one keyword attribute uh, argument you need to set, and that is T-spine. It is a two element toggle that basically indicates the simulation period. Uh, so for example, you can set it to zero to 10, which means from zero to 10 days. Um, and it can also be uh, mean like to 10 hours, minutes, months, etc. So how do you know that? So this essentially is correlated to the parameters that provide for the system's um, ODEs or ordinary differential equations. Um, so for BSM1, because all the parameters are provided in days, um, so it certainly means um, that when you are setting your T-spine, you need to be consistent and all the units should be in day. 
And uh, there are all uh, some of the other often used keyword arguments that could include the TE wall, um, which is a wide array and, um, and to specify like the output time points. Um, and then there's also the method, which essentially gives you, um, let you choose like, which ODE solver you can use. And there's also a um, state reset hook that specifies how you want to reset the simulation um, if it's filled. Um, for example, if you want to um, essentially re reset these um, initial conditions of the system to a certain to certain values, um, you can do so and write a function um, and then pass that to that state reset hook. So T span, T wall, a T wall, and T and method are essentially just the pass directly to the sci-fi dot integrate dot solve IVP that function. Um, so there are some other document uh, keyword pass uh, keyword arguments we can pass on, and you can check on um sci-fi's um dot integrate dot solve IVP for the documentations. One tip uh, uh, related to that is that the choice on the ODE solvers. Um, so essentially, if you expect the system to be converted to some sort of steady state, um, then it's usually faster to simulate with the implicit OD solvers like BBF or LSODA. Um, but sometimes these solvers may not, may not be very um, stable and you might not be able to solve that. And you can try some of the other solver methods. Um, and you can look online on like essentially the key points to choose between these solvers. Um, but really, if you iterate between the different solvers provided by SciPy, um, you really will be able to find one that solves, um, that will be able to solve and also um, to solve fast. Here, uh, we can reset system is dynamic is uh, to reset system is dynamic to true, and then we can simulate that. Um, so here we just tell it to simulate from zero to fifty days and give it the message. And so you can see here, um, the affluent is no longer um, empty. So this basically means we were actually able to say, to solve that. One thing to know that is that the previous show method only provides the system state as the end of simulation. So what if we want to know the all the data on, uh, during this simulation? And that's when we use this school objects. Um, so all the systems that is run dynamically has these school objects, um, and it would essentially tells you um, what um, dynamic data are tracked um, for the system simulation. And here, if we look at that system, you can see there's like the first um, CSTR as well as the affluent information are being tracked during the dynamic simulation. For any um, objects that include the um, same units as well as the stream and systems. Um, so you can look at the dot scoop object. Um, for example, here for the first unit, we can look at the scoop object um, and it gives you this object. And so you can do the same for the affluent. Um, and we can use this function called dot plot time series um, to visualize this um, uh, dynamic simulation data. Um, so here, when you are calling this plot time series function, you need to provide the ID of the components um, you want to see. So it will be able to draw this um, time series plot for you. And all the data are kept um, in this scope.record, um, uh, this object. So another thing interesting um, to note is that even for the um, unit that does not have that it's not being tracked during the process. For example, if we like a2 equals sys.flowshapes.unit.a2, and we do a2.scoop. So we'll still be able to see this object, uh, this object that's called sign unit scope. But if you do a2.scoop.record, it's empty. So essentially only units and streams that are being tracked. Um, will be will give you this data. Um, and in those record attributes uh, for the systems that are dynamic simulation, uh, dynamic conditions are being tracked. Um, so the essentially those values are all the state variables at certain time point. Um, so if you look at the if you want to look at the time data, um, you can do so. So essentially, these are the times. Um, you can export uh, the time series data in two ways. 
Um, so the first one is you can just do sys.scope.export and give it the file name. It will be able to export the system to that file. Um, and then another one is that when you are just doing the simulation, you can actually directly indicate where you want to export this stage, uh, this simulation data to using this ex, uh, export states to this keyword argument. And then another question you would want to ask is that, okay, the previous system is tracked like that to um, unit slash streams, um, but what if I want to track different unit or streams? Um, you can actually do so. Um, and that function is a sys.site dynamic tracker. So this function, um, for example, if we want to track the um, first, uh, I'm sorry, if we want to track the clarifier as well as the was the waste activity sludge, um, what we can do is sys.set dynamic tracker and then provide those units. And now, um, the all of us get those data we need to re simulate the system because in the previous simulation, we didn't really um, track these two systems, these two systems that straight. Um, so we need to simulate that again, and then um, we can use it to let, uh, we can use the same plot time series function to get this. And here I'm just uh, iterating between the 10 layers, um, the total suspended solid content of, uh, among 10 layers of this clarifier. Um, and um, similarly, we can also do this uh, plot series function for the width stream. Um, so, so far, it's interesting how to use these dynamic simulation systems. If you want to know what um, units we can use for this dynamic, dynamic simulation, um, so it's really what units come with those um, dynamic, uh, these functions needed for dynamic simulation, um, you can look at this completed list um, here in the link. Um, so we try to update this list regularly. Any units that, um, with this dynamic column being labeled as yes um, can be simulated dynamically. And then another thing you would want to ask, okay, is when is the system dynamic or how can we tell QS design or how QS design tells if a system or unit should be simulated dynamically? Um, so for you, um, you need to make a decision whether you want to run this system dynamically or not. And then with regard to QS design, there are three attributes that are important here. So the first one is sys dot is dynamic. Um, so when sys dot is dynamic is set to true, then QS design will attempt to do dynamic simulation, as and you need to provide those uh, informations accordingly. But as as sometimes, if you have a system that can be run dynamically, you don't have to run it dynamically. As in our example before, even for that dynamic system, the BSM one, we actually just said when we said the is dynamic attribute to false. QS design will just run that system statically. And now, when you don't give that information, so you don't tell QS design, okay, whether I want to run this system dynamically, then QS design will look at all the sign units within the system and to look at the sign unit dot is dynamic property or attribute. When that property is true, for at least one sign unit within the system. So that which means like within a certain system, there's at least one sign unit that is dynamic. Then QS design will think, okay, you said like one sign unit to dynamic. And uh, even though you didn't tell me whether you want to run the system dynamically, I can assume you will run, you won't run that dynamically. The final part here is this dot has ODE property. It essentially tells if you provide the ODE uh, the ODE algorithms for this sign unit. If that property is true, then QS sign will assume is a dynamic sign unit. But one sign unit does not necessarily need to have those ODEs for it to be able to run dynamically in a dynamic system. It is sufficient, not necessary. Um, later, you will actually, you will actually um, see examples where it does not have ODEs, but have AEs, and it can also be run um, dynamically within a dynamic system. Okay, so here in our BSM system, all of the reactors and the clarifiers actually has OAEs. So that's why the system by default is going to be run dynamically. All right, so that's the first part of how to run system dynamically. 
And then the second part actually then tells you how to write a dynamic and units. You will know um, how you can construct your own dynamic system. Um, the basic structure for that is that you need still to provide a wrong function as you provide for the other um, static units as we talked in previous tutorials. But at the same time, you would also want to provide the state and the state attribute for the relevant sign units as, um, as well as the with string objects. So for with strings, this dot state is a 1D numpy array of the lens n plus one. So where n is the length of all the components associated with in the system, and that plus one is surely the flow rate. For with the stream, the first n elements are the concentrations and the last one would be the volumetric flow. Uh, for gas space stream, the first n would just be the mass flows um, um, if you fix the last element at one. Um, so with stream, the D state is an array of the exact shape, same same shape as the with stream dot state, because D state, the D it stands for derivatives. That's essentially the derivatives of the states. So that's like how quickly the states are being changed. Okay, so here, um, if you look at the affluent state, you can see this is essentially the state, uh, the concentration of the state variables. That's essentially the same as the like, concentrations affluent dot com attribute. You can see that the this state has the shape, same shape as the state. So that's for the waste stream. But for the same units, um, it's actually a different story. Um, so the state is also a 1D NumPy array, but the length of that is not tied to the components, or we do not assume that, because the state variables relevant for a same unit might be different. Um, it entirely de depends on how you want, or how you write the ODEs or AEs. Um, for example, if you recall for the clarifier, um, because we need to record the TSS, the total system in the solid for different layers for that clarifier. Um, so for that, that um, unit operation, um, we would at least keep track of those. Regardless of what the shape of the state variable, this state is always have the same shape as state variable. As you can see here, the D state always have the same shape as the state, but if we check the shape of the state of this unit, with the shape of the state of the stream, you can see it's different. And finally, some of the dynamic units in the system has this dot state property that sort of formulates this data um, in the state. So it's easier for you to know, okay, so what that number is for. All right, and here comes the sort of like fundamental part. The first method you will learn about is called init state. So this is this method is called after this wrong function to generate an initial condition for the unit. For example, here we basically said that for this certain um unit, we just have it as in the same uh, in the same shape of the influent components, and I'm gonna reserve a last point for other use. And then for the D state. It's gonna have the same shape as a state, but I just got, uh, gonna give an uh, initial value of zero. And then the next function you want to write is called update state. So this function is used to update the affluent stream state arrays based on the current state. For example, in this simple function, I'm basically retrieving all the state um, from itself, and then I essentially assign the state of this unit to the state of the affluent stream. And similarly, there's gonna be this update D state uh, function where, to up, where you can update the um, affluence D state arrays based on the current state and D state of the same units. Then there will be the compile ODE or compile AE function based on its influence streams state or D state. Um, so here the sum algorithm is, you're gonna provide that sum algorithm. And this is just one for the AE. And the, just to tell a little bit about here, so this part is just like to save time, essentially. 
because we don't want to compile that AELD function every time we run that. Um, so it basically says like if there's none um, being compiled, I will call this function to compile this over your AE if it's already being comp uh, if it's already one available. Um, so I'll just return that. And similarly, some algorithms. Sort of small tip here is that when you are running that um, dydt or yt functions, um, you would want to write something like this, um, where you are just updating the values rather than assigning a new values. It will just make this uh, program much faster compared to if you are making a new attribute every time. Okay. So here is a very, very simple example of how to write the AEs for mix splitter. For mixer splitter, uh, we will just uh, mix all the incoming streams and then in evenly split them across the different um, outlets. As we have said before, so we have three different outlets. So that's we, what we're gonna start by default. But at the same time, but at, at the same time, we also don't fix that um, inlet and outlet streams. And then for the wrong method. Um, mix of the inlet streams, and then we look at how many outlets we have, and then we get the total flows of all, um, of all the incoming streams, and we split that between those different, or uh, among those um, different outlets, and we just let the design cost to pass. So we all just use the same components as in BSM1. Um, make some fixed influence streams. Um, so as you can see here, there's um, it's influent information and is being essentially evenly split between these three different um, outlets. Like all of the concentrations are the same. So obviously, if we try to do some uh, simulation here right now, is we haven't really set it up because we didn't really provide all the um, algorithm needed for dynamic simulation. If we try to do that, it will essentially return. Oh, I'm sorry. Return these errors. Um, so does not have attribute. Uh, so we need to provide those. So here are some long explanations. Um, how we are, um, how we can write the um the outbreak um equations or A's for this unit. Um, so I can because those are all math here, so I just gonna skip those details, and you can look at that. Um, but this essentially those would be the equations needed. Um, to write the A's for that mixer splitter. The model equations on derivatives for any um. Affluent weight streams, etc. Um, but essentially, this is the actual versions of how we want to write this. And I will just run this. So um, this the any AEs should take exactly the three um uh, positional arguments as seen here. So T is the time. Um, so y ins and dy ins are 2D numpy arrays. And now because we already add those algorithms for the system, uh, for the set unit, so we actually will be able to run this system dynamically. And you can see there's no error here. And we can look at this. Um, because it's really it's a mixer splitter, um, but it stays a constant um, because we essentially gives a constant influence to that. Um, so some uh, many like commonly used unit operations like the pump mixer splitter hydraulic delay and have these AE algorithms and you can look always look at their um, source code for how exactly they work. So previously what we talked about is the AE that's the simpler algorithm here. Um, we can also add ODEs to a certain unit uh, unit operation. And again, I'm gonna skip all the math here, but you can take a look at this afterwards. And I will just run this cell. Um, so kind of similar to the AEs, um, the ODEs also must take um, the exact number of uh, positional arguments, but here you need to provide four arguments. And now we add this new complete mix tank and let's see why this works. We're just gonna have a very simple system that just have this, uh, this complete mix tank. And we're actually gonna update this 
um, initial concentration to be different, so you'll be able to actually see the dynamic, the change. As you can see here, the results are more interesting as it tries to get through the steady state concentration from the initial concentration. The unit operations described the ODEs um, are the um, CSTR special experiment and also the flat bottom circular um, clarifier interest line. And there are others um, either being developed or under development interest design. And there are some other um, convenient features uh, related to dynamic simulation. Um, so there's one called um, exogenous dynamic variables. Um, it's basically to involve the incorporation of exogenous dynamic variables in unit simulations. Um, so this variable values, it changes over time, um, but it isn't explicitly dependent on any unit operations or streams. Um, for example, the ambient temperature or sunlight ir uh, irradiance. So those parameters might change with time, but it's not tied to the unit operations or the streams. Um, and you can always check the documentation, uh, doc, uh, documentation of these um, parameters. Um, so those are the long ones you can go through. I just won't go through it here. Um, you can either define those variables as a function of time, or if you don't really have a function, but you have some empirical data, then you, are, you can actually provide those data to describe those dynamics uh, uh, with time. And we also have some um, classic methods that uh, can enable the best creation of multiple variables at a time. Here, if we want, um, you can look at what it means to provide. And once created, um, those objects can be incorporated into any single unit operations. And you can also set these properties through these um, actual dynamic variables. Here, I actually gonna call the um, create system function of the meetup system. So here, the R1 reactor, it actually has some dynamic variables and uh, we can actually look at the value of this um, by providing a certain time. Lastly, another part uh, that I haven't really touched on, but you can still do that, is that to provide dynamic influence informations. For example, for a certain um, wastewater treatment plant, the influence is taking might change over time the state variables. So you can use that dynamic influence. Um, so this, although it's called influence, but it's actually a sign unit subclass. Um, so, but it will be able to generate the dynamic influence uh, from the, the defined um, time series data. And uh, if you want to look at the documentation, you're again welcome to look at that documentation. And I just gonna show some of these um, default values we pass on to this um, dynamic influence, as you can see here. And that's at the end of these tutorials. So again, if you find any more uh, any part of this being uh, confusing, feel free to submit the issue on Curious Science GitHub or come to our office hours. Enjoy.